My name is Jen Drapala. I'm one of the work-based learning coordinators here at the Tech Center. Anthony, if you don't mind the lights. Samantha. We would like to introduce you to our Tech Center administration. Our CTE director is Catherine Balistrieri. Our executive principal is Stephen Lowry. Our career academy principal is Preeti Day. Our school counselors here at the Tech Center, we have Maggie Francisco, we have Jerry Batista, Mark Endress, and Samantha Brendenberg. Our support staff here at the Tech Center includes Amanda Keenan for Special Education Services, Christina Montano, who is our social worker, Melissa Crea, our work-based learning coordinator, and myself, the other work-based learning coordinator. So our mission here at the Tech Center in Yorktown is to integrate career and technical education with rigorous academic coursework, preparing students for success in college as well as direct entry into a career. We utilize community resources, we award college credits, as well as scholarships to students who complete a course of study and attain that level of achievement. We have 18 component school districts we partner with, 50 different CTE programs for 7th to 12th graders, a three-day session that we share with the homeschools. 80% of our graduates will enter post-secondary, and 15% of the graduates will gain employment related to the trade area that they study here at the Tech Center. As you can see, we have many academies, and we will take you through them today with some highlighted courses as well. So by enrolling in a CTE program here at the Tech Center, students will have the opportunity to learn a trade while also earning a diploma, complete an employability profile, will collaborate with the districts to complete a career plan, students can participate in job shadow and internship opportunities, which are overseen by certified work-based learning coordinators, Melissa and myself, Students can complete hours that are required for the CDOS commencement credential. That is 216 CTE hours, which 54 of those are work-based learning hours. Students will earn certifications, and they can earn college and high school credits. So we also have integrated academics here at the Tech Center for some of our program levels. Um, to be eligible, the students must receive a minimum final average of 65 at the end of their first year. Uh, the integrated grade for English and math is the same as the trade grade. So for English 12, that's offered for all career and technical education programs. And discrete math is for the academies listed, communications, construction, hospitality, transportation. In addition, we also have our New Visions Health New Visions Engineering, and Senior 4-Hour Options. This would include Honors English, Social Studies, Physical Education, Health, Art, Teacher Recommendations may be required to get into these programs, and there are college credits that are offered. However, counselors at the home school, uh, in partnership with our counselors, can work with the student schedule and the credits that are required so that you're making the most meaningful time at the home school and here at the tech center. Okay, so this is the first page of our master schedule. You will today receive a folder at the end of this presentation that'll have the full master schedule in it with all of the courses in the course code. We're going to take you through at a high level today and highlight some of our programs. And our counselors will be available to answer any additional questions you have as you study the master schedule in more detail. The master schedule is divided into each session. So column one is session one offerings, column two, session two, column three, session three offerings. Again, we do our best to partner with you if the student needs to be in a different session. So we'll work with you accordingly on that. Starting with our Communications Career Academy, Mark Endress is our school counselor. Some highlights for this program is our fashion design and merchandising program. We'll be having their in-person fashion show at the end of the year, so we're very excited about that. Our uh, child development program has brought back in-person preschool twice a week, and I think they have about 13 preschoolers registered. So that's a really great experience for our students to be working with the preschoolers. 
and our digital film students are here today recording us and they help us out a lot here at the Tech Center with uh, different recordings and pictures and things like that. So Mark is also the counselor for the Health Career Academy. Some highlights in this academy are our New Visions Health Program, which the students are back at the hospitals doing their clinical rotations. We partner with Northern Westchester Hospital as well as Hudson Valley Hospital, and they're having an amazing experience so far. Um, we are excited to introduce a new program called Patient Care Technician, PCT, which you'll be hearing a little bit more about later on, as well as um, Emergency Medical Technician, uh, EMT. You'll hear a little bit more about that as well. Our Construction Academy, our counselor is Maggie Francisco for this academy. Some highlights that we'd like to let you know for course offerings are our horizontal directional drilling and heavy equipment, as well as our underground utility field technician. And these programs we're going to get a little bit more detail about as well in a few minutes. Maggie is also the counselor for our English New Learner Career Academy. So as you can see, we have course offerings in academics as well as different trade areas. And Maggie will partner with you accordingly if there is something that you see here that's not offered and we can kind of work together on that. Samantha Brendenberg, she is our counselor for the Cosmetology Career Academy, which includes our cosmetology program as well as our barbering program. Something exciting about this academy is our cosmetology senior students have brought back Salon Fridays where members of the community will make an appointment and they'll come on in and have cosmetic services done by our senior students. So that's been really fun for them. And our barbering students will be starting those services in January for students and staff internally. Samantha is also our admissions counselor, so you'll be partnering a lot with her as well as you start to do your scheduling. Jerry Batista, she is our hospitality career Academy counselor. This includes our culinary arts program and you guys are in luck today because our culinary students have baked you these amazing bread loaves that I think you can probably smell throughout the amphitheater and you'll get to take one home today. Uh, Jerry also is the counselor for our alternative options which include diversified work program and GED. Jerry also is a uh, counselor for Transportation Career Academy. The new exciting program in this academy is our electric vehicle program, which you will again hear more about in a little bit. And CTE at Tilly Foster Farm, Jerry is also the counselor for. This includes our animal care program, as well as our culinary arts program. And they just had their first educated palette or their restaurant uh, yesterday, which was a success and the students served culinary and hospitality to their family and different district personnel. Um, so it's really exciting that we're bringing all of these things back now. Okay, so you heard me talk about these highlighted programs. We are gonna go into a little bit more detail today with the best people to speak about it, the instructors. So first we are gonna talk about electric vehicle and I invite Zach Gerkart to come on up. So, my name is Zach Garka. I'm the electric vehicles instructor at BOCES. A little bit of background about myself. I've been in the automotive field for about 14 years since I graduated here in 2009, then continued on to SUNY Delhi for a degree in automotive. I'm excited to say that the electric vehicle program is the first electric vehicle program in New York on the high school level. So, no matter where you go in New York, this is the only one on the high school level. There's a couple programs on college level, but whatever students you send here will be the first couple students that will actually be able to work on electric vehicles and learn about electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles at the Tech Center. We have partnered with Megatech for many safety equipment for uh, hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles. Hopefully very soon we'll be getting a brand new Prius from them which is a training vehicle that brings all the voltages down to a safe level. Rather than 400 volts, everything is brought down to 12 volts. We are also currently outfitting a new shop back there it, after the presentation. If you guys want to check out the shop, we're outfitting a new shop with all the latest and greatest technology so the students 
will actually get hands-on and physical training on the great equipment that they're going to be using out in the field. We are actively pursuing uh, partnerships with many dealerships in the area. We've had meetings with Tesla, Toyota, Ford, Chevrolet, many great dealerships where we can hopefully offer many internships to the seniors later next year. And then uh, I just want to give you a little bit of background about the electric vehicles in general. Back in 2008, Tesla launched their first vehicle and delivered their first vehicle to Elon Musk. And then 14 years later, today, they've already sold over 3 million vehicles. So in 14 years, they went from 1 to 14 million to 3 million, and that's only Tesla. So you can see that in the future that there's definitely very rapid growth and need for electric vehicle technicians. With that, I leave you in capable hands, and we have a couple of videos to show you. Thank you, Zach. All right, so first we'd like to show you a training video from Tesla. My name is Luis Santos. I have been with Tesla since 2013. I started at a factory. I was a lead production associate. I came here not knowing a lot about Teslas, but along the way, everybody around me helped me out to be where I'm at right now. Tesla usually provides all the tools that we need to be able to fix the vehicle, which is great. Other companies, we, we have to buy our own tools. But here at Tesla, they provide everything from specialty tools to drills to the smaller things, uh, which is pretty great. Yeah. Teslas run solely on battery power. There is no engine, we call it the drive unit. Pretty much anybody that are willing to learn something new and are easy to train, they can work on Tesla. When training a new service technician, first thing we do is I make them feel comfortable. I introduce them to the whole team. I take them on a tour and then there's a whole day's worth of training that they have to do before actually working on the vehicle. My advice is to be a sponge. Absorb everything you see, you touch. There's a lot of information, but at the same time, those information are exciting. It's gonna make you look forward to coming into work. I remember when I was a kid, I had an RC car. My mom got me for Christmas. I was probably eight years old. I literally took apart that RC car to see how it worked. So looking at Tesla, they're pretty much life-size RC cars and I just love tinkering cars and fixing them. My mom got mad at me, but you know, I learned how to disassemble things. So. Being a Tesla technician, I enjoy, you know, fixing the cars. I look forward to coming into work every day. I look forward to helping customers get their car back just so they could enjoy the car themselves. Pretty much everywhere that I've been, my previous jobs, the way we handle our customers is just different and above the expectations of everybody. So. So Tesla actually had two representatives from their Mount Kisco location come tour our programs, which was really exciting. And they also offer internships uh, for students in their senior year. So we look forward to partnering with them uh, as we continue to develop the program. Um, one of our students is in our third session here at the Tech Center, and he couldn't be here right now in person, so he did a little video recording, and we are going to show you this and his feedback on the program. Hi, my name is Matthew Gonzalez. I am a junior at Brewster High School and I take the electric vehicle program at the Tech Center. What I like best about this program is learning how electric vehicles operate and how to fix them. My favorite part of the program are the shop days since we have experience working on cars. Mr. G is a great teacher and I have learned a lot from him so far. I look forward to next year when I am a senior as I plan to do an internship. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. So next up, we have Mr. John Madden. He is going to talk to you about horizontal directional drilling and then heavy equipment operating. Good morning, everybody. How are you? I'm a, proud, I'm a proud Husker, a town Husker, and I first want to take a second and let you guys, uh, just remind you guys of the power of your guidance uh, in, as a guidance counselor. Um, Buddy Dowd, uh, one of the guidance counselors from New Yorktown, had the insight to send me here in 1987 and it changed the whole course of my life. I came here and ended up going on to college, I never thought of it. I uh, thought it was going to be a construction worker, basically. Ended up coming here and then going to college. So if you have a student that's not doing well, make sure you 
steer them towards this place, I personally would send any one of my children to any program here. So, that first. Second, okay. You want me to pull it up? Yeah, got it. Okay. So, uh, several years ago, um, we made a corporate partnership with this company called Vermeer in a way where they donated uh, some equipment to us. Um, I had a student who ended up getting a job with them as he was waiting for, um, waiting for a boat captain license. So he had, he was, got married, got a, uh, so had, uh, him and his wife had gotten pregnant, was looking for a job, called me up, put him here. Um, he ended up being, doing very well for them right around the Hurricane Sandy uh, incident. So I called him up asking for a chip. We had a chipper that was broken, and I, we didn't have one. It was like the end of the year, and it was tough to get one. We were doing all this work, and he got me a chipper. I called him, I said, hey, uh, do you have anything laying around that we can use or a big project to do? I didn't hear anything, but two weeks later, he basically said, I got some good news and bad news. We have a new chipper um, we're gonna give you, and we're gonna give you one every year, so you have brand new equipment, and your kids can learn on proper, safe piece of equipment, and we've been working with them ever since. So several years later, um, uh, after that was working out very well, because it turned out that half of the chippers that they sold were, um, students have been through our program over the last 50 years. So it made perfect sense. So they called me up and they said, hey, we have this thing called horizontal directional drilling. We think it's the future. Is there any way you think we can get something working with you guys here? So four years later, they donated us uh, a, 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 a multiple hundred thousand dollars worth. It's not, so it's just a computer and a seat, but it's years in development. And they allowed us to be the first program anywhere to have one of their virtual uh, drills to teach our students so when they leave, they have a, a, a path to make some money. The average horizontal direction drilling certified operator makes over $100,000 nationally. It's such a huge, it's such a, a big deal because, just quickly, I know, they always say, long story short, I'm gonna talk. <laughs> just quickly, I'll, I'll stop in two seconds, but just quickly, I got called by a company called Vanilla, and they, uh, who's a big uh, gas installation company, and they said they were gonna be putting in 10,000 miles of gas pipeline in New York State in the next 10 years. So I said to myself, holy cow, that's a lot of work. And now with the advent of the electrical cars, and um, the state is saying, look, we need to put electrical um, charging stations all over the place, there's only way, two ways to do it. Either you can rip everything up, mm -hmm. which is an environmental disaster, and a very costly disaster, or you can literally drill underneath it, come up, put your, your uh, utilities in, pull it right back, and cars can still be in the parking lot while you're doing it. So it keeps um, workers out of the most dangerous part of construction, which is the trench. So being in a trench is the most dangerous thing construction workers can do. This gets you out of that. We can drill under lakes and rivers and ponds and roads. We can go under trees and under everything else, up, tearing everything up. So um, we are actually trying to pilot this program, and our kids are taking to it. It's just another step in addition to our, you know, just the general construction that we do and heavy equipment and tree work, which we do. And um, it's really focused us on safety and training. And so Ready? have a look, and just so you can see what it is. So the drill, the drill is steerable. This is a one minute video. It's hard to, to describe what it is, but this is a great little animation that I pulled off the internet to kind of show you an idea. So the, the, the drill head is shaped like a duck bill. And whatever direction you want it to go down, you point it to the, the, the six o'clock direction you thrust, and it will bend that way. Once you get it where you want it, you spin it and it goes straight. So this is, they've been doing this for forever in the Midwest. The problem with, of course, the East Coast is a lot of rock. However, this thing doesn't matter. It just goes a little slower. It goes right through rock, it goes right through everything. And that's a big, this, the scary thing, the reason that you haven't seen this is because it's a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy all the gear to get going. Um, but, and the people are a little tentative because it's like, well, nobody's doing it. But it turns out that they've been doing it out west forever. And it's very dialed in and very, very safe if you understand what you're doing. So as you can see, the drill comes through, they attach their utility, and it comes back out the other way. You can run pipes like this. They did one in Texas, gas pipe like 25 miles. Mm -hmm. Under a river, under the, under bridges, under roads, okay? So I know this seems like no way. So we do this, and then we also do that, but, 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 but really, so that's, that's the long story. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So um, that's pretty much uh, the bulk of it. And of course, we have our heavy equipment program. And in Texas, we have 250 acres here. We have literally the greatest campus in the country, as far as I'm concerned. We, we can 
we can we have everything here. Okay? Does that make sense? Any questions? Thank you. Okay, so Sarah is a student in Mr. Madden's program, and she's going to come up and talk to you a little bit about her experience in his program and another program. So, Sarah. So if you've ever seen the list of uh, classes offered here at the Tech Center, then you'd understand that it's a very daunting task to try to figure out which course that you're actually interested, which fit your interests the most, which ones uh, fit your needs the most, and like give you the best advantage in the work world. Um, so when I found my decision uh, about two years ago, I decided um, I think I made the right decision. Um, I'm, I'm Sarah Mickelson. I'm a senior at my school, Hendrick Hudson High School, and I'm a second year student in the Urban Forestry and Landscape Services program. Um, this class is like one of the best things that has ever happened to me. Um, so basically, they offer, like they go over anything from uh, environmental care to um, to heavy equipment operation and like they have horizontal directional drilling as Mr. Man just showed you um, and also excavation and that's kind of a segue into my other class USIC um, offered a program this year uh, called underground utility locating and basically what that is is or the way that it kind of uh, translates into urban forestry is when you do excavations and when you even like grade something if you dig anywhere below six inches then you're supposed to get a mark out because you know those pipes and like wires and stuff running underground those can be kind of dangerous if you hit them <laughs> um, they can maybe give you um, a bit of trouble if you like hit a gas line and then also an electric line and you know if you're a pyromaniac that's all cool but we don't want that <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, basically in this class in USIC locating um, what I'm doing or what we're working on is I'm learning like the history of locating and like how it all got started and I'm learning, oh, this is how cable works. Like, that's what uh, part of the um, class we're on right now. Um, so I'm kind of learning to understand, like, how do I locate certain utilities? How do I, like, mark it out correctly? Do I have to dis, like, I learned that you have to disconnect certain wires from, like, the grounding block next to your house. I'm not sure if you know what that means, but, um, like if you want to locate correctly. Uh, so this class is really important because I'm getting certified um, for like, and like uh, learning to understand how utilities and stuff uh, work and how to read the markings on roadways and, um, and like uh, work sites and work sites. Um, and like they're color coded, they have different symbols. So it's really important to understand uh, in Mr. Madden's class, Urban Forestry, um, like we do a lot of excavating, and before any job site is open, like for like groundwork, then you need to make sure that you have a mark out, or else it's a huge liability. So um, basically, these class in t these two classes in tandem, um, they work uh, together to like teach me safety and like. Like, it's very important that uh, you take care of yourself, um, like your entire life, not until you're 30, like Mr. Madden always says, and then try to, try to not, try to live forever after 30 and kill yourself before. Um, That's a long story. <laughs> like lessons. <laughs> so, um, also it offers me a lot of work opportunities. Like, uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned that, this, but um, the horizontal directional drill, it comes, like, when you first get out of high school, when you first get out of that, cert like, get out of cert being certified, 
then you also learn, and you also uh, get paid like a yes. hundred thousand a year, and like maybe not right off the bat, but pretty close to, and like it gives you a great starting opportunity. Uh, you could go into arbor, uh, ar arbor culture. Arbor culture, thank you, um, or like a lot of um, construction work. So it's a very good foundation, and uh, Mr. H's class uh, really helps like just like solidify your understanding of uh, the safety precautions that you should take before starting work. Um, these are both like very like definitely good options if you don't know what to do or if you want more options like if you want like a side gig or if you want to do just like your own backyard maintenance I don't know DIYs but um yeah I definitely don't regret it and um if anyone's interested then you know talk to anyone the here <laughs> on USIC and it'll support a lot of what Sarah said about that program. It's basically just a class where we go out into the public and we locate underground utilities so that construction companies can be safe while they work and so that they don't cause any problems out in the public or cause any damages or anything like that. We've got like gas, um, AT&T, cable TV, there's fiber and copper lines, all the different things you have to learn to figure out how to hook up to a line and where to hook up. As far as our instructors, they're great. They come prepared every day. They have the motivation and I can even see the motivation coming from them. That's what I love about our instructors is that they come prepared and ready to make us better every day. I think it's just a challenge most of all. You have to troubleshoot a lot of things. So a lot of us like that as well, the challenge at the job. Walk in that door, usually if we're going to go out and check a ticket, get your stuff on and roll out and get your stuff and go and then work with your group, get all of it done, paint it out, mark it out, come back, talk about it for a little bit, see what you did, see if you did a good job and then you're out of here. If they think that we're qualified and we're ready to be out there by ourselves doing the things that we do usually just on our own, they'll give us a job offer straight out of high school. I would much rather be doing something outside versus pushing buttons in a factory or something like that. I always remember my dad talking about it and knew that there's a lot of benefits with coming with a job like this. And like he said, it's outside, you're not stuck in a house or a factory all day working. Always excited to get out and do new things. Excellent. So Mike, would you like to come up and tell us a little bit more about this program? Good morning everybody, how's it going? So in this program, obviously, we're teaching kids how to do underground locating, the history of utilities, how they're installed, that helps them to better understand how we're going to find them once we get out to the field. Part of the great thing about this program is partnering with Mr. Madden's program, we're going to be installing utilities in the farm field on the campus within the next year or so once we get the material in, which I'm working with my partners in Con Ed and other vendors to get that done. Kids coming out of my program, students that graduate with their certain credentials, driver's licenses, ability to work, we're not only giving them a career field, but we're giving them a job. Most of the other career opportunities that you have in most schools, you have to then go to college or go take additional courses. With USIC's partnership with CTE, what we're doing is, if a kid graduates, okay, we're gonna give you $17 an hour. That's 42,000 a year. We're also gonna give you a $38,000 truck that we pay for gas that we pay for and the equipment we pay for it sends you out to work. We have contracts in 47 states as well as Canada. So for that kid who's like, you know what, I do need to go to work, but I wanted that college experience, no problem, we can locate you anywhere in the U.S. This is a great gig for kids who kind of lost their way, um, people who want to venture out and, and learn a lot. And, and the one thing I've learned about doing this job for the 13 years I've been doing it, it's very good at networking. The amount of contacts I have in the utility industry, service industry, even different vendors for the utility equipment have helped me along my career. So if you have any students, juniors we're taking in as well, um, but we prefer seniors because we want them working this summer if we can. We're all, if everything works out, we're gonna hire the kids by March. So they could be in class doing their two hour session while getting paid, driving that company vehicle to home and back to school every day. 
Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so now we'd like to invite up Bernadine Ordonez, who's going to speak to you about our new program, Inpatient Care Technology. Hi, so good morning. Um, I am the Introduction to Health Occupations teacher, and I'm excited to share with you some information on the one-year PCT EKG phlebotomy for juniors and seniors. In this program, they'll learn in three sections, theory, anatomy, physiology, practical skills, vital signs, and gaining experience in a clinical setting. But what I'm most excited about, excited about is that at the end of the school year, the students will be able to sit for an exam and be certified in three different areas, PCT, EKG, and phlebotomy, and gain an opportunity to be employed in a hospital setting. And with that said, I'll see you very soon. fundamental foundation if you're interested in EMS and would like to become an EMC. However, if you're only interested at the CFR level, it's good for advanced standing and civil service exams, such as the fire department and the police department. If you are interested in the EMT program, The age requirement has actually been lowered due to our pandemic. The age requirement at this time is 17, lowered from 18. At 17, the same month as the New York State exam, that's when you have to be 17, you will be permitted to be certified as a New York State Emergency Medical Technician. With that being said, the position and scope of practice has evolved tremendously. You're no longer credentialed, and your options for the ambulance has doubled within the last two years. Since the pandemic, EMTs are now being used in emergency rooms, med surge floors, kind of parallel to CNAs and medical assistants. However, the training is a lot more diverse and covers a lot more different um, systems, nervous system, cardiac system. In addition to that, you can get employment with FIDNI. FIDNI has great benefits. If you take the EMT program here, you have advanced placement in their program. 
Normally, it's a six-month program once you're on the fire department. This is in addition to your advanced standing. If you enter the fire department with your EMT certification, although full transparency, they do make you take their own version of the EMT instead of six months. It's an expedited program and it's only six weeks. If you're going to be a fireman, you get advanced placement. So if you were going to start at tier one or tier two, depending on the department that you're applying for, it's always documented that having these certifications do offer you advanced standing, which means earlier placement. We have articulation agreements currently with Empress. We have articulation agreements with AMR Ambulance. In this area, Ambulance and Mobile Life cover with me being the instructor here, I am employed at all of them and I am working on articulation agreements here with our staff. Thank you so much. Okay. I actually would have mm -hmm. uh, introduced to you two of our students that I think hearing from them would uh, support the program. Hi, I'm Viviana Sanchez. I'm the Sanchez. I'm 17 years old and I go to Brewster High School. I'm taking this EMT class because I want to do EMS in part time while I'm in college. And I'm currently well, hoping to take the pre med course in college. My name is AJ Variety. I go to Brewster High School. I'm 17 years old. Um, I got certified as a first responder last year. And this year I'm going to. Uh, get my EMT certification so that I can become a fireman. Thank you guys for having us. Enjoy the rest of this program. Okay, so thank you everyone. And now you've heard a little bit about our highlighted programs. We're going to tell you a little bit more about the offerings here at the Tech Center. So for work-based learning, Melissa Cray and I work closely with the students and teachers to provide them with internships, guest speakers, field trips, any opportunities where they can apply what they're learning in the classroom in a real work setting. We have a lot, a lot more businesses than this that we partner with. This is just some of them um, where our students will go and do an internship. Um, during the last two years, there were many virtual experiences we were giving our students, and we still provide that today. The state is recognizing some of these experiences to count for work-based learning. Um, in addition, College Central Network is our online job board where students can be assigned a username and password. They can search for jobs directly in the site, interact with employers, and apply for jobs. There's opportunities in there to listen to career podcasts, get resume tips, interviewing tips, and they have access to the site while they're a student here at the Tech Center and when they graduate. So we're always here for them on their career journey for really the rest of their life. Um, currently, Melissa and I have been working with about 100 students and have them out at placements with about 40 businesses. And we're working with another 40 students that we'll have out within the next two to three months, probably another 15 businesses and more to come. These experiences are either individual, where a single student will go to an internship site, or the students will go as a whole class, and the teacher will supervise. Um, we also partner with all of the homeschools, as many of you do senior experiences towards the end of the year in your springtime. Um, we will work with you on placements, as well as paperwork and the schedule, um, because just the internship experience is so, so valuable for the students. And then by the end in the spring, they have so much training too. They're so super valuable to an employer as well. Okay, so this is a list of some of our business and industry partners. We have hundreds and hundreds, up to a thousand partners that we work with for internships, for field trips, as a guest speaker. These um, businesses are part of the consultant committees and our teachers meet multiple times with businesses throughout the year so that they can stay up to date with what's going on in the industry. So this is just some of those businesses. In addition, we have local partners with our Chamber of Commerces, which are within the towns of our component districts, and we attend events um, that they have as we can. 
And we also are part of many professional organizations, especially with work-based learning, with the workforce development, with Westchester County and Putnam County. Um, so we're really staying connected there as well. And then we have student organizations. So we here at the Tech Center have National Technical Honor Society, where we're celebrating students and their academic achievements in academics as well as in their trade. There is a criteria for students to become a member and we are going to be starting this process very soon. So they may be coming to you for a recommendation because that's part of this process. And then we will have our induction ceremony later on this year. In addition, Skills USA is our student-led organization where we elect president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and we meet about once a month to perform community service activities here on campus and outside in the community. There's also an opportunity for students to compete in their program or trade area against other CTE students at the regional, state, and possibly national level. So that's really exciting. And we actually have some skilled students here that are representing us. And if you have any questions about their experience in the program, they're all seniors. They can let you know that, and they can also help to direct you uh, to where you may need to go later today. Okay. I am going to turn it over to Christina now, who's going to talk about mental health support services. Good morning, everybody. So Good morning. Good morning. here at BOCES, mental health is a collaborative team effort. We work together to support the social, emotional, and academic success of all of our students. Um, in my role as a social worker, um, I primarily support students through individual counseling using a range of evidence-based modalities, including trauma-focused CBT, dialectical behavioral therapy. I also provide um, crisis intervention and risk assessments as indicated. We do presentations and activities in the classroom to provide psychoeducation and increase awareness around mental health issues. Um, and this year, we've started a, a wellness series, which is a lecture series of different organizations and community partners coming in to raise awareness on um, themes that are of interest and benefit to our students. Um, so we really aim to work with the whole person. So that involves referrals for ongoing support, oftentimes concrete, uh, concrete assistance to help them with their needs. Um, and yeah, so it, I really look forward to partnering with all the districts and working collaboratively to ensure the comprehensive success of all of our students. Thank you. Okay, so hi everyone. Again, my name is Samantha Brennenberg, school counselor and the new admissions counselor here at the Tech Center. We want to encourage you to please follow us on social media. The Tech Center is on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where you can get a really nice glimpse into what we're up to. We will have uh, Tech Tuesday posts, which are weekly posts about some really nice uh, spotlights on our innovative programs. We also have monthly Students of Distinction, which each month we share uh, really nice highlights and features about our student successes, students from all different programs, and students who are chosen from different school districts. Um, we're also bringing back a past initiative, revamping that initiative, called Bring a Friend Friday. And this is a really cool opportunity for our current CTE students to bring a friend or a classmate from their home school district, have them visit their class, uh, and kind of re, uh, get to know their positive experiences in their class. And these friends or classmates can also visit any class that may be of interest to them here at the Tech Center. Okay, and here are our upcoming events. So on December 14th, we have New Visions Health Open House, and this will take place at Northern Westchester Hospital. February 13th and 14th are our CTE Tech Tours. These will happen on campus in person and then following that we also have virtual tours that will be available. Uh, March 16th is our CTE open house. March 23rd is our regional union event and Jen is going to be bringing up a flyer on this for some more information. 
Okay, so our regional union information event, March 23rd from 6 to 9 p.m. There will be a variety of union partners in attendance, and this is a really great opportunity to learn about career opportunities with union apprenticeships. Okay, the next event is April 25th, our regional college, oh, sorry, that's okay, <laughs> regional college and career fair and our regional college night. Again, here is a flyer for a little bit more information on that. So our regional college and career fair, Tuesday, April 23rd, uh, 25th, excuse me, is here on campus for students only. That is offered um, sessions one and two. And then our regional college night is offered uh, that same evening, and this is open to both students and parents. Really good opportunity to see some uh, regional representatives, college and careers. Okay, and then May 17th, we have our CTE scholarships and award breakfast. And on that same day is also our ne National Technical Honor Society induction ceremony. Uh, May 18th is our fashion show that our students will put together. June 6th is our CTE recognition ceremony. And last but not least, June 15th, we have our new student and parent orientation. Excellent. Thank you, Samantha. everybody for coming and attending and learning more about the programs here at the Tech Center. Um, we have a packet of information to give you that will have that master schedule in it as well as some of the flyers you saw and other materials. So you can make your way down. Our skills students are going to be at the table and they'll give you the folder as well as the loaf of bread baked by our culinary students. Okay, well, don't forget your folder and your bread, and happy holidays, and thank you again. <laughs>